What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Weekly Any Newcomer, the weekend series where you and I take a look at an indie game that's been bouncing around my brain over the course of the last week. Today, we're taking a look at Hieroglyphica, which is a unique little roguelike you will know if you spent time here at the Nerd Castle that I am a sucker for roguelikes. Every time one comes out, I try to put it on Weekly Any Newcomer because I get excited about it. I did it with Tome, and Tome wasn't even a new game. I was like, I want to do an episode on Tome. Hieroglyphica is unique in the sense that it's a game about trial and error. Unlike other roguelikes, Hieroglyphica's rules are very, very simple, but it's the gear, the armor, and the way the enemies work that you gotta kinda fiddle around with because it's all presented in hieroglyphics. The story takes place somewhere around 1905 or 1910, and you're an explorer from Europe who's going down into a Egyptian, or I don't even know if it's Egyptian to be honest, it never really says. I mean, from some of the hieroglyphics, it kinda seems like it, but you're going down into a pyramid, and you're picking up gear from sarcophagi, and you've got to figure out what this gear does. There's booby traps everywhere. It's a little bit like Spelunky maybe meets... I mean, I, don't, I, I hesitate to say Spelunky because there's nothing active time about this game. It's turn-based. But it's got kind of like the theme of Spelunky mixed with a little bit of darkness and despair from some of the other darker roguelikes you could play. And so anyways, it's kind of a game you've got to see. I can't really explain what it is until you're in the game. And then once you see it, you'll be like, oh, I get it now. Very, very simple game. It's very hard to play well. And also very gear dependent. This is a game where the random stuff that you pick up is going to matter a lot. And so if you get some bad gear rolls, you can definitely have a bad time in the pyramid. And if you get those good gear rolls with like the laser snake staff that cuts things in half with lasers, as would be implied by the laser snake staff designation, then you'll be in really, really good shape. Nonetheless, let's play ourselves. I can click on his eyeball and he blinks. Anyways, let's play some Hieroglyphica, shall we? It cracks me up that one day, the person that made this game was like, you know what would be cool is if you click on his eyeball, if it would blink. Like, just that was an idea that somebody had, and now it's in the game. Like, it doesn't for, it doesn't serve any form or function. You can just click him in his eyeball and be like, get pink eye, you pyramidal bastard. That's how I get my revenge after he kills me over and over again. Two difficulties, there's normal mode, which don't be deceived, normal mode is actually pretty goddamn difficult. And there's hard mode, which I haven't played around with yet, but I can only assume it's that much worse. Normal mode has really been serving me my ass on a silver platter lately. The game has ten levels, the goal is to go right until you go down ten things of stairs, and then if you can do that, I assume that you win. I've never made it yet. I actually, I've made it down to floor six, and I was doing really, really well, but I didn't get a chance to finish the game, so. It is what it is. Hieroglyphica, let's go. Alright, so welcome to Hieroglyphica. Things you're going to want to be aware of when you play this game. You've got stats at the top of the screen. They don't tell you what these do either, so you've just got to kind of piece it together as you're playing the game. This is your initiative, as far as I can tell. It seems to affect the turn order and who gets to go next. I note that when I have a way higher number, I get to go, like, first, before all the traps and everything go off. And when I have a low number, like right now, everything else seems to get to move full turns before I get to move again. This appears to be defense. It nullifies damage, but to what extent, I haven't really been able to tell. I've gotten it up to 40 or 50 so far, and when you get it up that high, some of the lower level mobs can't even touch you. It, like, bounces right off of you, so I assume it actually has the power to negate damage if you can get it high enough. This is your attack power. It's how much damage you do versus the enemy's defense. Like, this guy's got a shield, so you'd probably deal less damage versus him, whereas this guy has no shield, so you probably deal a little bit more. Our gear is at the bottom. This is our accuracy, by the way. You can miss. I'm not a big fan of missing in video games, but you can miss in this game and it honestly it only happens in the first couple levels once you get a couple pieces of gear you should be good and you shouldn't miss very much anymore but at the beginning of the game it can be a tad gnarly you've got your explorer shirt you've got your pith helmet neither one of these do anything this is the inventory system I was talking about you mouse over things and it'll give you a brief explanation of what they are in hieroglyphics or in pictograph form. We've got God mit uns, which I think is, God, oh, it's 1870. Never mind, it's not 1905. I never noticed there was a date on all this stuff. I think that means God is with us or something like that. I have no idea what that one means. That one appears to be Latin. So this one's German, this one's Latin. But I have no idea what that says. And then we've got our dagger over here, which looks like it's got a navy symbol on it or something like that. So maybe we were in the navy. It's got an anchor and some other stuff. It's got nautical symbols on it. So that's how the game works. You take a step. Everybody else takes a step. This is where my first foible with the game comes up. I actually think the game could play a little more quickly. 
I, I would like to see one of the things I would like to see implemented with the game is a lever on the side that allows you to increase or decrease the speed of the game. It plays too slowly for me right now. If there was like a double speed option or a triple speed option where you could just click stuff and be like and everything would just like move around, I would like that better. I think double speed would be perfect. So we'll take a swipe at him. Everything in this game is very, very intuitive. It's one of those things that I'm thankful for. This guy has no weapons, so he can't really attack us. He can shield bump us, and if you get shield bumped backwards into a wall, you'll take damage. But given his position right now, he's really going to struggle with that. Enemies will have contextual menus, so when you mouse over them, I love the UI in this game. It is very, very good. I love the way that you just mouse over the thing that you want to do something to, and all the actions you can take are listed there on screen for you to do them. There are traps on the floor. Those are air traps right there. So this one will bump you backwards if you're right here or right here. If you hit a wall, you'll take 10 damage. This little number is your HP. That's his HP. These little buttons on the floor, they set off all the traps that are on screen at once. So watch out for those. They can also be useful because the enemies are affected by traps as well. So if you want to get them caught up, you can do exactly that. It might be wise to step back right now and have him follow me. Don't be afraid to retreat in this game. Seriously. If you want to fight right here with a bunch of enemies, you are very, very fragile this early on in the game. And so normally I would recommend not fighting when you're at this point in the game. So our weapon has two attacks. Every weapon has kind of like a swipe attack, which is this one right here. It'll be the two crossed swords. And then every weapon has like a stab attack that you can only do if you are, I guess, adjacent to somebody rather than diagonal to them. So the AoE seem to be more dodgeable. I can't tell you that's what the way that it works like 100%. You can see the traps go off every single turn. These guys are fire demons. As far as I can tell, they're immune to fire damage. They don't take any damage from it whenever they get hit by one of the torches from the walls. They can also light off flames and stuff if you let them sit around too much. That was the shield bump right there. If that had put us into a wall, it would have hurt a lot. Luckily, it's on a reasonably sized cooldown, so we should have time to sit here and just stab this guy to death. The beginning of the game is very, very slow, but as you get further in, you'll get gear that allows you to move multiple spaces at a time, attack multiple times, you'll get magic spells and stuff like that. It actually becomes pretty fast-paced if you stick with it. By the third or the fourth floor, that's a life spirit right there. These little jars over here either have life spirits or death spirits inside of them when you break them. The death spirit is just this, but it'll have a minus sign on it, and it'll be red colored. If it touches you, you lose health. If you touch this one, it's got a plus sign. It'll give you health unless you've got certain pieces of gear. Certain pieces of gear will reverse the polarity of the spirits that you take in. So you can get like a helmet of Anubis. And since he was like the death god, it means that you eat the death souls, but the life souls cause you damage now. There's lots of weird little gameplay adjusters like that. We've actually got kind of a rough room right now. We may have some problems. we got to get over to this sarcophagus and get some loot. Otherwise, I don't think we're going to make it. He's going to try and get in our way. I'm going to step down to here on this switch as soon as they all get done moving around. And as you can see, that actually knocked him into the wall right there and did two damage to him. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Get him for two damage right there. And then when I hit him, you see how he set the whole ground on fire? Pretty gnarly stuff. I'm just going to keep stabbing. He's now dead, and we've got a life spirit right there that's worth 20 health. I'm going to take that before doing anything else, because they flutter around randomly. You see that guy? The enemies can pick up life spirits as well. From there, we got a shield, which has been added to our character. We'll take a look at it on our character list, or on our character sheet in just a moment. I don't know how useful it's going to be. Hopefully it negates fire. So this shield, this is our first pictograph, so I'll try to explain to you my logic when going through here. This shield, as far as I can tell, I wish you could click this and it would keep this up here so I could motion at it. So it's got our little face right there, and it's got a skull underneath it with the enemy. I think that means that if we kill an enemy, it will always drop a life spirit. There's no longer death spirits coming out of our enemies. On the right hand side, you will find that it gives us defense, and then it also gives us a little bit of attack power too. So we should hit a little bit harder now that we have this equipped. All in all, this is a really fantastic piece of gear that I think is going to positively affect our ability to compete with the mobs at the end of the level because there are some pretty nasty foes in this game. They can get in your way. If you've got good gear, you'll probably one-shot them. If you've got bad gear, you may have to be a little bit more creative when you learn how to deal with them. I'm going to watch that wall trap right there. It should light up before... That's a death spirit right there, by the way. Step back. It's about to go off. You can actually you can blow out fires with wind elemental stuff. 
There's lots of little interactions in this game that you wouldn't really think about. But I, I was stuck behind some flames yesterday, and so I thought, I've got a wind spell. What if I could blow out the flames? And I tried it, and go figure, you can blow out the flames. It was a weird moment for me. It was a surreal moment because I didn't think things interacted like that. There was no implication from the game that things would work like that, and so I just didn't think to try it until I was actually there. You can also freeze enemies. You can melt the ice with fire spells, stuff like that. Lots of cool things going on in this game. We are fine. We want to wait right here until this shoots. We'll probably get burned by this one, though. I think. Yeah, it's okay. There's a life spirit right there. So if we play our cards right, we can probably take the life spirit to get our health back. Unless he steps right there, and then it's a little bit obnoxious. He's down, though. So now we've got multiple life spirits, although I'm about to get hit by the flamethrower again. Luckily, there's plenty of life spirits around, so... Nothing to worry about there. I'm going to pick up that one. That'll get us back up to max health. 99 is the maximum health you can have. I think the biggest hit that I've taken so far is 36 damage. But that was a game where I made it down to like the third floor and I still had really, really terrible gear. And so I, I got pinned by a boss and he just took me out. It was really, really ugly. It was not a fun day to be a European explorer. It was rough. The game is slow paced. As you can see so far, it's one of those games that... It's a little contemplative. I wish you could play it a little bit faster. I think that's my main complaint about the game so far is that I wish it played a little bit more quickly. We're about to get set on fire. Or maybe not. I thought I was about to get burned to death, but we appear to be fine. I'm going to step away from the flamethrower and we'll loot these sarcophagi. Oh, really? He didn't? Oh, it's because we got full health. That makes sense. And there's the flames right there. We got hit twice. I'm going to pick up this guy on this turn. I also wish that there were items that let you take multiple actions in a turn. Or maybe, like, there are certain actions that should be free. Like, maybe picking something up and then moving. Everything in this game costs you a turn. So if you change your gear around, costs you a turn. If you open something, costs you a turn. If you pick up a life pickup, it costs you a turn. And I think some of those things could be folded into free actions to make the game flow a little bit more. We got some armor. Alright, what does the armor do? The armor, it allows us to move twice as long as we're moving horizontally. It's going to raise our defense and it's going to raise our initiative. However, we cannot move vertically with this armor on. Alright, I'm going to put it on. It's going to cost us a turn. I'm going to move to here. And we've got no flamethrowers around. We might get... Oh, that's an air blower. Never mind. They change element sometimes. I don't know exactly why the blowers change element. But on occasion, they'll change from like fire to ice. And from ice... It might just be random in all honesty. Go ahead and take care of him real fast. Because I've never found a downside to killing enemies. There is a timer in the game as well. Things will start chasing you from the left. They're very, very powerful spirits of each level will start coming from the left and trying to hunt you if you play the level too slowly. So if you're trying to like farm gear and stuff like that, the game will try to punish you for it by trying to push you through the level. The spirits, however, are fightable. Like, they are combatable. You aren't stuck, like, at their mercy getting murdered every time they show up. You got blown into a, mo a wall multiple times and murdered. Because there's sand piles on the ground, unfortunately, I can't double move through sand piles, I don't think. Either that or it's because the spirit was in the way. Oh, the spirit was in the way. Alright, the body was weak and the spirit was willing to block my trajectory and not allow me to go through. I'm going after these two sarcophagi right here in the hopes that maybe we'll get something decent out of them. Got one shield guy right there. I may try to play the AoE. There's a chance it'll miss. But it got one of them. We took six damage right there. He hit us with his mace. There's plenty of life spirits around. In fact, we don't even need to spend a turn grabbing them because they're going to come to us. I am going to defend myself. That's one of the bonuses of a shield, is you can put yourself in a defensive stance if you've got no other move. It should negate damage. It'll either negate the shot entirely when you take it, or it'll take a huge chunk of the damage off. So like a 10 damage hit will do like 1 damage, which is far, far, far better than getting nailed with like a max damage hit. There's the boss of the first floor. I don't know if we're quite on his level yet. He's pretty nasty. He can cause you problems if you're not careful. There's the kill, and we got a magical spell off of him. His job is to guard the stairwell so that we can't get down it. What do we got in there? Another magic spell, albeit a crappy one. I don't use that magic spell very much. I don't like it. This one over here is pretty good, though. So this magic spell. This magic spell is a fire AoE. It makes a cone of fire, and it's on a six-turn cooldown. 
This magic spell right here is a bit more complicated. It takes death spirits and it converts them into poison clouds that are adjacent and all around the poison. The poison cloud will surround the death spirit. It took me a while to figure out exactly what the hell this did. And then this one right on the right hand side, it turns life spirits into fire piles, which will be diagonal to the spirit itself. And so, for example, if there was a spirit right here, I could play the fire. I could play the spell and it would burn him with fire. Or if there's a poison spirit right here, I could play it and it would poison him. So, things to think about. There's a lot of strategy. There's one of the spirits right there that tries to chase you down. They're quite nasty. I may actually just make a run for the stairs. You don't have to stand your ground and fight. That's a major part of this game is you just learning that you don't have to fight everything you come across. You can actually run from them too, which is exactly what I'm going to do, I think. Yeah, he's on to us now though. We might take one hit before we get down the stairs. It's going to be a big hit though, and damn is it going to hurt. Ooh, unless he does that. That's unfortunate. The reason I would normally stand my ground and fight him, but since this spirit is coming right for us, it becomes a little bit more troublesome. I'm going to move over to here. We're just going to go around. Oh, he disengaged. That guy kills life spirits, by the way. They don't like life spirits. None. Life spirits, they're super happy. They're always singing songs like, I got to admit it's getting better. It's getting better all the time. They're always singing songs that are just like way too happy. And the guardian spirits don't like that shit. Be a downer. It's all about death metal when you're in the pyramid. It's all about death metal. About depressing things happening. We got a battle axe out of there, which appears to be fire elemental. You can tell by the blade. Oh yeah, all the armor changes in this game. That's a really big deal to me. I've brought that up in my other playthroughs. I love it when my armor and my gear change in video games. This thing right here is going to increase our attack, our attack power by a load. It also inflicts fire when you hit enemies with it. But it looks like it can only attack on the right. Which is a little bit concerning. Accuracy is pretty bad. And it also hurts our initiative. Either way, it's better than that stupid dagger. So we're going to use it. Ow! You clawed me! I don't like that one little bit. No thank you, sir. No thank you. I need to set him up to be on my right so that I can hit him with the axe, otherwise it's not going to work very well. There was a life spirit inside that jar. There was actually a frost bomb inside that one. Slice! He's now dead. I'm going to try and eat his spirit too afterwards. Take his mana into my body so I will become strong. And then we're going to open up the sarcophagus right here to get ourselves a little bit of the loots. The lootest of loots. Our next sarcophagus is going to be over there. Oh, we got a snake medallion. That's good. That'll be helpful. As you can see, that one actually raised our initiative. There seems to be a medallion for every single stat, and they do help out a lot. I got a medallion one time that raised my defense by like 20 points. It was incredible. It made me basically an impervious death god. Like, I didn't hit that hard, but I could walk through the... They could rain blows down on me, and it was like the perfect... It was like one of those hats with an umbrella on it. That's what it was like against their raining blows. We need to set this up so that we're adjacent to him. Otherwise, Frost Bomb back up. I thought that exploded when it hit the wall. I learned a thing today. He might have to, all right, I can break this, but actually that works. He's immune to fire. I forgot he's immune to fire. Damn it, my plan was so good, too. I was so excited for myself. All right. Defend! Oh, he got froze up. Okay. Well, let's see if we can go around then, and I'll try and get him with the AoE. Oop, I clicked on the wrong thing. So we want to get him with that right there. Perfect! And then, if I can get that spirit, it'll bump our health up a little. No, stop leaving me, spirit. If you leave me now... Little awesome spirit, I can't eat you. Perfect. You actually have a pretty good run going right now. The game is highly skill-based. Like, seriously, knowing what to identify. The first time I played this game, I was like, what in the hell is going on? Like, I was so confused and, like, I wasn't sure of the turn orders or anything else. The game does not have a tutorial, so it's not going to teach you how to play it. You just kind of got to figure it out of your own devices. And it can be tough to figure out if you've never played it before. It is very, very simple, though. It'll probably take you two or three run-throughs before you start to get a feel for the flow of everything. And after that, I like the game tremendously. I actually think it's a pretty good roguelike. 
All things considered, graphically, it's competent, which is more than you can say about 90% of roguelikes. I like the stylized graphics and the way that it looks. I enjoy the fact that the armor changes on your characters as you equip stuff. That's a very, very big deal. Oh, man, he dodged our attack. That's disappointing. We have problems right now. We have big problems. We can shield bump him. We can set him on fire. Let's go for the fire spell. We'll burn him to death. He's probably going to bump us back. Oh, he didn't. Interesting. There he goes. Uh, these guys are a big fan of the shield bump. They've also got spears or whatever, so... I don't know what I want to do with you guys. Ow. Oh, I broke the... I was going to say, I don't know what just happened right here. I'm going to take that and get some health back because we're getting roughed up pretty badly. And then I'm going to move in adjacent so that maybe I can get him with the axe. Ah, he dodged. Our accuracy is really bad right now, so you can't really predict whether or not we're going to be able to land hits or not. It's going to be a little bit tentative like that. On the plus side, when we hit the enemy, we do a lot of damage. Let's step forward. When we step on the trap, it's going to freeze both of them. That was all a part of the plan. He dodged me while frozen. That's how talented he is. All right, let's get him out of the way. There are life spirits everywhere right now. Nothing inside that sarcophagus. You're going to start to get empty sarcophaguses as you get for an empty sarcophagi as you get deeper into the levels. It doesn't happen that often, but it does seem to become more common. I don't want to be against a wall, and I don't want to be a diagonal to him because he can bump me into a wall and do a ton of damage. These guys actually don't hit for much as long as you stay adjacent to them, but if you're diagonal to them, they can knock you into stuff, and then that does way more damage than you can handle. There's another kill. We're at max health right now. The run is going very, very well. Ooh, we got skunked on both sarcophagi. We've got a death spirit coming up behind us. Or, I'm sorry, the little hunter-killer spirit thing. I'm going to move to here. made a mistake I think if you stand on these though it blocks the airflow yeah I was gonna say it just goes and it just like farts out so that's fine I just need to get away from this guy over here as you can tell there is some screen tearing the game does have anti-aliasing issues however I do like hieroglyphica I think it's a good game and so while we still got some time left I wanted to talk about the things I do and don't like about it I think I do a pretty good job during the playthrough of talking about it wow skunk for a third time that is really unfortunate, but with the ice in between us, we should be able to escape from that spirit for just a minute. Got to zigzag our asses out of here, though. So graphically, I think the game is perfectly competent and, in fact, exceeds expectations as far as roguelikes go. I do like how everything is stylized and everything stays in theme. It feels like you're in an Egyptian dungeon that you don't really understand. Everything is confusing. Everything is working in a way that you don't quite understand. And I like that about it. I think they did a very, very good job with the game's design in that sense. I'm going to kill him, but we're going to get frozen in just a second. Sound-wise, I think that the... Actually, the soundtrack surprised me on this one. It's a good soundtrack. It's a soundtrack that fits for what you're doing inside the confines of the game. Got another magic spell right there, and that's one that I've never seen before. Item variety in this game is pretty expansive. There's an achievement to get all the items in the game. Have them all drop for you anyways. I have not gotten that achievement yet, and I've had new items every single playthrough for about the last three hours of gameplay. And so I, there's a very wide variety of items, and some of them take some experimentation to figure out what the hell they do. For example, like this one right here, it looks like you shoot a fireball at somebody, and when it hits them, it splits into two fireballs that bounce off the back side of them on the opposite side from the side that they ate the blast on. I'd rather just keep this AoE over here. It seems like we basically get the same thing. They're on the same cooldown, so I assume they do the same damage. I'm going to wait for this trap to go off right here, and everything should be fine. I like how they've used kind of a 1970s George Romero in, I think, like Night of the Living Dead meets Dawn of the Dead type of music is what it reminds me of. And I think that actually fits for the game. It seems weird when you first hear it, but it fits very, very well. On the technical end, the game does have some issues. So like I said, I would like to see a slider that makes the gameplay a little bit faster so that I don't spend so many turns sitting around, you know, just waiting for other people to play. I think double speed would be perfectly fine for this game, actually. I think that's what I would aim for. The other problem that I have is the game seems to have some internal coding issue where occasionally the AI will get stuck taking its turn, and because the game locks its save state to keep you from save scumming, it can be sort of difficult if that happens when you leave the game, when you come back in, 
it's a saved state, and so the game will still be trying to do whatever that CPU action is. And so I've lost a couple of playthroughs that way, and it's been disappointing to say the least. However, that being said, I'm hoping they'll drop like a day one patch. As far as I know, this game is developed by one guy, and so... Ooh, 15 damage. Apparently he's weak. He's an ice spirit. I never re Oh, shit. We just got bombed on. Oh, my God. So, anyways, I never realized he was made out of ice. Apparently fire really, really, really makes him upset. Hopefully we'll break out of that ice pretty soon. But all in all, I feel like as a package, Hieroglyphica is doing pretty well. It doesn't come out for about another week at the time of this recording. And so I can't tell you what the pricing is going to be when it goes up on the Steam Workshop. However, or the Steam Workshop is not the proper terminology. When it goes up on the Steam Market. Oh my god, this guy is just annihilating us right now. I need something. Luckily his weapon's on a cooldown, but we got a lot of spirits behind us. The big lucky thing that we're running into here is it's creating ice barriers, and these guys don't break ice barriers for whatever reason. If we miss like another time, I think we will have lost. And actually, he's in defensive mode. Ah, he blocked the blow. Yeah, we're probably going to die here. The bosses are very challenging at the end of the level if you can't Oh, I should have used the magic spell on him. No! I didn't realize my cooldown was already up. Get him! There it is. There's the big kill. But yeah, if you're interested at all in roguelikes, I think it's a mistake not to play Hieroglyphica. It's a simple game, but what it lacks in complication, it makes up for in diversity of gameplay. And also, it makes up for just in terms of the fact that it's very, very clean. It's rare that I get roguelikes that feel nice and modern, and I just, I like the game. I just wish it played a little faster, and then that one bug drives me crazy. It's half, oh man, I did something dumb. That was stupid of me. That's going to be it for me today, though. This is Weekly Indie Newcomer, the series where you and I hang out for a little while and play an indie game that is, as I said, bouncing around my brain over the course of the last week. This week, we're taking a look at Hieroglyphica, which comes out in a couple of days, about a half a week on Steam. I will see you all later. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with a new indie game for you next weekend. Hi to everybody.